Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. We are in beautiful Maldives today. And if you have not been here, I highly recommend you come and visit. It is one of my favorite tropical paradises in the world. There is lots of them out there. And uh, you know, you can kind of mix and match and compare. I've visited a whole bunch in the Caribbean and some near Africa and some Southeast Asia, etc. And uh, Maldives to me is like top of the top. Seychelles is also very good. I have not been to Bora Bora and have not been to Fiji, so I'm kind of holding out on those two. But anyway, if you get a chance, come down. Uh, right now we have beautiful sunset, which is coming. I was hoping to record earlier when uh, you can see the beautiful turquoise water, but it turns out that uh, it's very hot to sit in the sun and record even now. So anyway, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, welcome. If you are interested, we're talking today about a subject which one of my staff was suggesting bring up. And this is one of the reasons that I'm here in Maldives today. So it's kind of fitting to have that. And this is the subject of work-life balance. So as we travel the world, as we go and we relocate to other places, as we do business, as we look at all that sort of thing, uh, this is frequently something that comes up. And so I think that people misunderstand work-life balance from a very practical standpoint. And I'm gonna share a few thoughts of my own, from my own experiences, and I would love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. I will share, uh, share a few different things that I've heard from a few different places as well to contrast them and dive in. So let's go and do that. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. For those of you who are new here, welcome. I'm Michael. Uh, the offshore citizen team are some of the foremost international tax and relocation specialists. So we help people to do international tax planning for themselves and their businesses whether they're gonna stay in their home country or relocate abroad. And then in the case of relocating abroad, figuring out what the best place is and assisting with that, as well as when it comes to the tax planning, helping you to form companies and open bank accounts and do the planning around it, et cetera. So if any of those things are interesting to you, please reach out to us. You can book a call with me, calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below or send a message through offshorecitizen.net. Okay, so work-life balance. Um, I hate the term work-life balance. It uh, I guess to me, it sort of implies something that I'm not especially fond of, which is maybe like leisure, insufficient push, a set of values that I kind of say are like wrong thinking. And so let's talk about it from the values perspective, first of all. So what about a brief background on me? I started my first business when I was in high school, it was a computer company, and for you know, a long, long time, my father is an entrepreneur, although not a particularly successful one. And, you know, part of what I wanted to do growing up was to have the opportunity to pursue things that I like to do. And I viewed work and business largely as a means to an end in that regard. Okay, so my basic idea was, all right, I'm going to work as little as possible in order to have enough money to go and do the things that I want. And Later on, I got kind of interested in passive income and starting other businesses and stuff like this. And after a few years, I had kind of like my first experience of passive income working very, very little. I don't remember how much it was at the time, but very, very little. Uh, certainly no more than a day uh, per week worth of actual input time. And at the time, what I learned was this pretty valuable lesson that shaped a lot of my views after that. And this was the idea that, well, you have to do something with your time. And I think a lot of people pursue freedom. I think freedom is actually a, quite a bad goal. I'm not a, not a big freedom fan uh, because I think it sort of misplaces the whole objective of what you should be paying attention to. And that is, hey, listen, you're needing to spend your time on something. So what's more important than having freedom or passive income or any of those sorts of things is what are you spending your time on? That is the key, most important thing. And if you're spending your time on things that you feel to be meaningful. I'm not gonna say that you enjoy, because I don't think, I think enjoyment can be somewhat overrated and kind of is also a mislabeled term, um, but that you find meaningful, then great. It doesn't matter if you're working a lot or little or whatever, you know, freedom from what? Freedom from doing a thing that you, you know, find meaningful, that's crazy, you know? So that should be the fixation. And it turns out it's like probably a better fixation because what I find with a lot of people is they get into this sort of apathetic, sitting around not doing much interesting. And I mentioned on this channel a bunch of times before that I find wealth is wasted on wealthy people. A lot of people make a bunch of money and have frankly no good ideas. They don't have a lot of cool stuff that they're doing with their money. They might end up being, you know, wealthy person in the graveyard, but who cares, you know? And 
So I think pursuing things of meaning are important. And then those things that you're pursuing of meaning, you should pursue with gusto, right? With like your whole heart and soul into it. There's kind of this concept that Nassim Taleb talks about, which is, you know, skin in the game, but then even soul in the game, right? Soul in the game is even better. And so work-life balance to me often implies that people want to get away from what it is that they're doing. And I certainly can appreciate that. I have at times worked jobs that I was not particularly fond of and I wanted to get away from them. And the objective, like I said, was to minimize the time. But I think it's a symptom of a root cause that should not be addressed through work-life balance. It should be addressed by working towards something that you're putting your time into, which is meaningful. For me, those things that were meaningful happened to be in my leisure time, my time outside of work but it's great if they can be in the work as well. So that's sort of like the first context is I think our objective should be to do something that is meaningful. And when we're doing something that's meaningful to us, we probably don't need so much work-life balance in general. The second is if you want to achieve success, generally the idea of balance is not really how you do it. So I noticed years and years ago that a trait that tended to correspond to business success was, was aggression. And I don't mean this as like physical aggression, I'm gonna come and beat you up. I mean like people who just push harder. You think of a salesman who's willing to make more calls, right? You think about per a person who's just willing to follow up more aggressively, be more on top of it. Like just, you know, they're just, the execution gap is tighter, they're putting more hours in, et cetera. Now, there's a lot to be said for working smarter, not harder, that's totally true. And that should also be part of the optimization journey. However, however, uh, in general, I don't find that most people who are working smarter, not or, or, I don't find the people who are not working so much are necessarily working smarter than the people who are working more. So I, I don't think these things much have much to do with each other, okay? And so this is one of the reasons why I kind of dislike this concept of work-life balance, and I sort of disagree with it as being not really what a lot of people think of. So a lot of people think of like, oh, I'm gonna put in 40 hours a week, et cetera. Well, here's the reality. So, I'm here today, and part of the reason that I'm here in Maldives is because I spent a few months working really, really hard. There was sort of a period a few weeks ago that I kind of was at the end of a bunch of deadlines, and I was pulling close to all-nighters. I'd be up till eight in the morning uh, or thereabouts, sometimes on calls, sometimes working on things post-calls, et cetera, kind of preparing for a bunch of things that were going on in some of my businesses, et cetera. And it was just, frankly, a lot of work. And it was not, it's not particularly good for my health at all. And I've talked to various friends who are you know, quite successful, et cetera. And we've talked about how, listen, when you are most successful, frequently you're not doing the best things for your health. You're not doing the best things for your relationships. You're not doing the best things for a bunch of this stuff. The key is not to get rid of that. Okay? I think that by the, the trade-off of getting rid of that is that you're just going to trade off success. So the key to work-life balance, in my opinion, is being able to cycle things, right? So... I say, listen, I'm willing to work especially hard for a short period of time. And I know it's not forever. I'm not gonna work like this. You cannot sustain a certain pace for years and years and years. It's just not physically possible, right? You will exhaust yourself, you'll burn yourself out, et cetera. And then when you do that, the recovery time is like four times as long. It's really terrible. I have a good friend who, I remember kind of first went through sort of a phase of burnout a few years ago. And it took him like maybe a year or more to get back into the zone because he just had burned himself out. So that's not a good way to go. What is a good way to go is to be able to say, listen, there are certain moments when you want to push extremely hard, when you're gonna, yes, stay up past whatever is reasonable, get up earlier than reasonable, be tired, have a bunch of coffee, drink some Red Bull, some power drink or whatever in order to get going. Because of the fact that there is like a deadline and if you don't get that deadline done, the consequences on the back end of it are really significant. So you're like, okay, I'm willing to make this short-term sacrifice because the payoff uh, is either high or the consequence of not doing it is high. But the trade-off of this is on the back side of that, I'm gonna cycle into some rest. I'm gonna give my time, myself some time off. So the issue is people who just like continually try to go there, then they're just gonna burn themselves out. That's not healthy. And health is, you know, let's be honest, a really important part of work-life balance, right? Or of, kind of like sustainable pursuit of something that's meaningful, impact, all of like whatever it is that is important in your life. Health is a really, really important component of that. So that cycling, I think, is the key thing that you need to pay attention to. Tony Robbins talks about this guy idea of like work-life integration. And I think that's an interesting concept in and of itself. If you sort of think of that language and how you would apply it, uh, integrating it into what else is going on and being able to, you know, 
bring elements that say are rejuvenating into that, uh, that kind of routine, et cetera. But I think generally what people's uh, work-life balance, quote unquote, should look like is periods of fairly normalized, you can sustain it for quite a while effort, peaks of extreme effort, extreme time commitment, extreme sacrifice, et cetera, and then downtime of rejuvenation. And that's, I think, quite healthy. I think I, I, there's probably a lot to be said for biomimicry, right? You go and you look at bears go and hibernate in the winter, right? We have four seasons in a lot of parts of the world. There's a season where you're planting and there's a season where you're harvesting. And there's a season where you're not doing a whole heck of a lot. That is, I think, the best way to think about this topic if you want to both have a healthy life, healthy relationships, et cetera, be able to you know, explore and have diversity in your life, et cetera, and at the same time, be able to have outstanding results. So anyway, those are my thoughts on, uh, on work-life balance. It uh, clearly could be you know, not right for everybody. I don't know the answer to that, uh, but certainly for me, having gone through different attempts at figuring out this puzzle, that is, I think, the most viable long-term option. And that probably even cycles over the seasons of your life, right? There's a period of time where you're gonna spend a lot of time learning. Then you're gonna spend a lot of time doing. Then you're probably gonna spend a lot of time teaching other people and going on to the next phase. So let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear your comments, put them below, and I will see you on the next video.